Boy, so I look at the, uh, we got priority over here in the stock round. Um, the options available. I actually think that player one here is more or less holding what he wants to. I got a full, uh, I've got Sudaban and the Hungarian Railway, um, which are the two companies with two trains. There are no more available of them. Okay. Can't, can't do anything about that. The guy who owns the Hungarian does not have another corporation. So I'm pretty happy holding two shares no matter what. Uh, I look at my allocation between the KK and the BH, and I can't say I'm unhappy. I think the BH is going to make more money than the KK. The KK, first of all, isn't even set up for its 5G run yet. It was just a matter that it had less space, <laughs> even though it's got a whole ton of dots. It had less space to... Um, uh, to run a big train and it looks like the red company is going to be able to run that eight train and maybe not even hit many doinks in it like <laughs> one or two at most and it'll probably be able to trim those away as we go so that is not too bad what we're looking at one two three four five six uh optimal would be to find a way up to there. Uh, we're not going to find that going through anything, though. Which, you know, might be this. <laughs> that might be the best best route that I've got uh, available to me. Anyway. Um, so, I don't think the KK is worth dropping BHs for or anything like that. Uh, the MS, I look here and I say, oh, I want the CL. No, I don't. It lost a train and is probably worse than the MS because the MS essentially is already set up with whatever track the CL has. So the CL might be able to do better, it might not, but it's not going to be a big difference it's going to probably be falling back into that range. How about the BK versus the Bohemian versus the MS? That's a more interesting question. I got a bigger train here. I think actually the BS, uh, the BK looks more valuable. So I may exchange this share. It's the only thing that I have. I have 11 certificates already um, for a BK. I think that may be more valuable. One hell of a mystery here, which is what is the SB going to look like? I don't think it's going to be very good, <laughs> but it is running out of here. What does that look like right now? Well, I'm not going to be able to run through there, but 817, that's on two. That's really awesome. Uh, 24, I actually can hit pretty well on that. Um. Let's not buy the BK. Let us instead buy, for an additional 60 bucks back, one of these. I think that's actually the best rail out there with a big 10 train and room to grow. Nature of group thing. Once one person kind of identifies something uh, valuable like that, other people are moving in that same direction. I gotta put a marker on him. He sold it in this as well. Um, they don't necessarily go with the same choices if they have something better. But this is a game where stocks aren't likely to move much. Uh, there's not, there's, there's not a, a lot of opportunity to, you know, look at something and see some advantage you can pull with it or whatever. And those, uh, those SBs look like they're going to produce the best money out of anything out there. Uh, right now. So everybody kind of picked one up. This guy had to sell for it, but that's advantageous for him because he's really short on money and he wants to keep control of his company <laughs> after he spent so much cash on it. Uh, now we come back here and uh, he's going to pass. Uh, he has done his, his job. 
in, in, in terms of he had one thing that he wanted to exchange. He's got really good shares on everything else. The only, the only thing he might do is get rid of a red. Um, does he want to do that for a green? Eh, it's not entirely unpleasant of an idea. One advantage to buying the blues, if we were looking in the same price range, but I think the green can expand out of that range, it's up in the 30 range, is it has a higher initial stock value, so it's going to make more money. Um, you see 10 bucks per share for a while, 20 bucks per share for a while, but uh, I think, let's see. Is this going to be a 10 buck a share difference? That's the question. Because I don't really think the BH is going to make as much money as either of them. It's further back in the line. But if it sells out, <laughs> it wouldn't be bad. Um, and me holding all those shares means it's more likely to sell out. So it's kind of a hard call. I'm gonna go odds. I'll try to optimize my portfolio rather than favor my own stock. Now, I'm just gonna sit there and pass, hoping that I sell out. That means I'm not gonna probably, you know, whatever opportunities there are for these blues and greens and whatever, and I sold a yellow, uh, will have passed. And red will be the best thing available, <laughs> probably. Uh, but if I put another one out, you know, I mean, if I exchange for a green, I'm probably making someone else buy my red. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> a little bit of silliness. For example, this guy bought a CL, so he had two of them, thought he could sell it out. Didn't end up happening, so he dumped them and sold out and bought an MS. This guy bought the last MS, so he didn't get, you know, the third one, basically. Everybody else was passing other than those two at that point. Um, I think we're all filled to 11 except the guy who got hosed, right? 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He actually bought another one of his uh, CLs. He thinks it's got at least as much room to grow as the KK. I think he's wrong. Mm, most, most of my people do. Uh, <laughs> eh. But one advantage is this does gain more stock value, at least right now. And... I had the cash for the uh, for the more expensive shares. Um, there's a lot of money over here. This guy, um, you know, should be invested in the most expensive shares, but he's not. He's got his BH, which is worth nothing, basically. Um, this guy was kind of hoping to be able to get more BHs. He has a he has 80 bucks. He could buy two more of them if they were available, or he could buy another green or something. The way he jiggled things around, he didn't end up with any extra shares. He just ended up with his own stuff. Uh, so before the stock round ends, we move the stuff up that's sold out. And that's almost everything. Oh, I'm not worried about the stuff up at the top of the line. We're on three operating rounds per turn. I don't think the bank is going to break in three operating rounds. I also don't think any more trains are going to come out. I don't see a pile of money on any of these companies. And uh, the ones that can swallow have two trains on them. The only, uh, the only, uh, the ones with two trains could swallow, but they already have two trains. The only question would be whether or not the Sudban wanted to swallow for the CL. Um, or Ludwigsbahn. Uh, which, if I didn't have a lot of Sudban, <laughs> would definitely be uh, an option. Just like over here, the Statsbahn, I only am holding 30% of that company. Somebody could have taken it from me or forced me to sell off good shares to defend it. Um, nobody did that. So uh, That kind of shakeup, though, usually costs the people trying to force the shares out. Like, they force the shares out, but they don't get all of them. They get maybe one if they're lucky. Uh, so that kind of movement is, is hard to do. Um, 
unless somebody so if somebody in a game like this is holding three companies <laughs> which I think would be very very hard here uh, but it's possible you know if players decided like the coal mines uh, didn't make much sense or if someone invested in uh, in six players it's gonna be tough <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I mean if uh, there, there are a few cases where I guess I could see it happening. If somebody got something dumped on them, um, it's possible somebody would be holding three companies. In general, though, you're not going to try to engineer a third company. This is an 1830-type situation without a special color zone that allows you to hold shares in a company without them counting against you. Uh, so I clean up these. Um... And let me think if there's anything else. I don't know why I'm taking my time. My videos are just getting so long because I have no timer on the camera. Uh, none that makes sense anymore. So, yeah, I, uh, I think we just roll into the, into the operations. And there's still going to be some, some room for track jockeying in the game at this point. There's just... I don't think we're going to see anything shake out with the shares that's particularly interesting. If we see one of the companies, you know, make a surprise move in terms of making a lot more money, and who could that be? That could be green, but those shares have already been purchased up with the idea that that's going to be doing better than the other, you know, the other companies that weren't sold out um, and has room for growth, therefore... Uh, is there anyone interesting who could show up here? This guy could dot in Vienna. I don't know how much that does for him. Because this is not worth much right now. And I've already got my 4G run um, set up. So how much better does it have to get? Uh, what about the other side? Anyone else got dots that could get in there? Black could get in there with a dot. The KK is already in there, which is part of the problem. Uh, so yeah, the only dots that could get into Vienna, it looks like Black can get in there, and they probably will. How much is that going to help them? It depends on whether or not they can get up into there. They're only running a 4G, um, but hitting an 80 is about as good as it gets, right? We got a 70 over there and a 70 there. And hitting an 80 and a 70 as my tail of my root is not at all unappealing. <laughs> no. <laughs> is Yeah. I... Let me try not to worry about those double negatives too much. It looks good, man. All right. Remember how I thought black was going to be able to get the dot in here? They're not. Uh, well, <laughs> they don't have enough cash is the problem and i thought they had a 40 dollar dot that they could build they do not at least i think that's what I, I remembered thinking um which means purple has the opportunity to grab that dot that may or may not be desirable for them uh black definitely wants it because currently they're running a one coming out of here one two three four into Budapest. Um, it's possible they might be able to skim something that doesn't do that, but it looks pretty unlikely. Basically, it would mean an endpoint in both of these, and they can't have that. They got a G train, so no. <laughs> whatever, whatever track I built now. Um, which means, then what? Uh, I've got one, two, three right now, and could conceivably come down and hit here for four. Ugh. This is built wrong. That is not the right track. I screwed something up. Uh, I think. Because this was set up so that I ran that way. And then when I undid something, something bad happened. Um, can't be the X then. 
which means what? I don't know. Maybe it was this. That does everything we want it to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> now that's a 26 run. If I could get the dot there, I could lock that in. Is that what I want? Is that the best I can do ever? I don't know. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of dots down here uh, that could be taken advantage of if the game goes long enough. So, what are we looking at? Well, it's not trivial, but it could be a one, two, three. Cutting through. Uh, four run there, possibly. Uh, which probably is worth more, right? 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, no, not quite, 190. Um, the stock value increase is nice. I think other people made the right choice in not buying this up, and this guy was deluded thinking that his company was going to do better. And that kind of delusion is common, right? You get excited and... Um, you think positive thoughts and you think something great's going to happen and nah, it's not. <laughs> what I did was lay any track and I probably want to. Now, there is a potential that I could extend out of here. What does this come out to? 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, 110, 160. 170, 250, which is in the same general range as I'm in, which is probably about as good as I'm going to get. Uh, I mean, yes, I could eventually swing down and do something like that. Uh, one of the advantages to that setup is I might be able to get yellow to build track for me, but as long as I have this dot out there, Yellow probably uh, isn't that excited about the idea, to tell you the truth. The track, of course, there's no wide curve, so I'm going to break down this way instead. Just not what I want to do. Jesus. I need a wide curve to curve into here, too. I mean, it's just, wow, it's just ugly. Got that same run, but they're taking uh, the effort of putting this into place. What's interesting here is I could conceivably run up here, down here, and back up. Uh, or maybe somehow hit here. The fact that I've got that yellow dot and this one gives me a lot of control over there for that 4G train that I'm running. Uh, right now, the track from here only runs at 25, so the 26 is a better run, but whatever. I don't have anything too impressive to do. Actually, what they're doing is trying to develop the route to here. And essentially, we're fixed at 28 with upgrades to whatever we can get. Now, there are no more brown cities left, so... Uh, we can add 10 bucks to our route, assuming it doesn't get cut by somebody's dot. Purple takes this all-important dot. It is actually vital. Um, I'm able to run my 4G up and through there, actually. And the 6 coming through Budapest as well, coming down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, could that improve... Potentially not. I don't think so. I mean, maybe there's some route through here, but that, that looks kind of fixed, and that's a 61. Everybody's paying out. Um, again, there's no reason to swallow anymore in this game. Um, unless you're going to juggle trains. I don't think anybody has the kind of cash. You know, we got people with like 300 bucks on their companies, which is a shitty amount to have there. You know, a 61 run... 
though with that kind of money could mean I'm close to another train uh, but I don't have that kind of money there I do have the kind of money that I was able to buy the dot and now because I'm running a G train I'm able to buy the other dot if I want it and right now the most appealing place looks like there I kind of need that uh, if I don't have that I gotta fight you know and, and my route will get a little bit weaker um, but yeah <laughs> it is not so if something weird were to hook up up here it's possible that I want um, track up there it's possible I would want to run up there but I don't think there's enough time in the game for that to happen and that puts us to the SD D has just upgraded to the eight uh, for, to the five G route from hell. At least I think it has. Uh, let's make sure. Coming from here, one dink 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 dink, two dink, three dink, four five dink 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 dink. dink, dink. <laughs> um, and then you know, conceivably I could extend it, but. <laughs> That's a long walk. Uh, however, it might be fitting in nicely with other people. We'll see what that's worth. And then on top of that, I've got an eight route, uh, which I don't know what I'm going to do with. <laughs> to tie the I, it might be here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's pretty good. Or eight cutting. No, uh, seven here. Um, it might be, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, because I don't get into there. Um, it might also be using Vienna Budapest. I still got this track open and heading up, but that doesn't look promising. We're looking at, I use this route so I can come down here, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, we'll see which one's worth more. Another buck going this way. And that thing was worth 37, that 4, 4G run. Let me make sure again. Three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, uh, nineteen, twenty, <laughs> twenty-four, twenty-four. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, yeah. Yeah. So that comes to a total of a 69 run. Wow. No dots to protect that SD route. It's not going to last. <laughs> the KK proves that immediately by dropping a dot here using the same route. It only pulls 26 in. It's not as good because it can't break through here yet. We're working our way through in that direction conceivably. We could have tried in this direction, but we want to go through Vienna, right? Uh, so <laughs> we try to open up a path there. Although, honestly, I don't think that's our best move. So I'm going to reverse that and try to break through directly here. There's no, I have no need of this extra uh, piece there because I can hit this doink just, just fine. Um, <laughs> I do have to make sure that there is a way through, which means kind of the bow and arrow piece. That has not been used that I see, but I gotta look for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, and now, so they dropped their dot there. That's probably where the next UG dot is gonna be if I can use that stuff, which I'm pretty sure I can, uh, given that I run through Vienna, so, uh, if the CL doesn't grab it, the CL may well be able to use it. So it's just really a question of, um, you know, the stock valuation and who gets to get this wonderful dot, which is, we've been waiting on for a long time, this thing to open up so that we could get there. Nobody's had quite the reason to build it. Uh, all the people have been building towards it in certain ways. And now it's just fallen through together because Vienna um, 
going in all directions now. The 10 train indeed shows up a little bit better than everyone else at 29 a share, but the stock value doesn't make up for that. We got to make more than we're making. Uh, basically, I think we're running this. It's like 10 bucks more than running down here. But if I can get down here, uh, let me make sure I did, went the right way. So if I gotta go through that doink, that's not, that's not optimal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, the problem with all that is, if this gets dotted out, I'm screwed out of this. <laughs> you know, there, there's just nothing really great about uh, about what green is uh, green's advances that are possibly available are. Um, and I mean, all this richness over here for the G trains, that doesn't apply if you don't have a G train. And that's where things get kind of weird is you really have to build uh, through every area of the board. People are trying to build two different kinds of track, track for the G trains, track for the non G trains. Um, and you want to get them both running through Vienna. And it's like, just that's where you get such a mess. Uh, speaking of which, that got replaced. I, I chose this instead to try to cut, well, cut my way in. And finally, our B and H. <sighs> you know, the 24 showed up very, very briefly, the track number 24. But, <laughs> boom, it's gone as soon as it shows up, <laughs> used over here. I hope that wasn't by me. Um, I could, somebody played it there, and I think it was indeed the KK that played it there, wasn't it? Because it was the guy who went here. Um, I needed that track here, right? I think. Maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, I needed that track here as well. But I can do the interim here, and there's only one thing this upgrades to. And it upgrades into the piece that runs right into there. So I'm fine with that as long as that piece is still left. And I don't see any of them eaten. Uh, that was able to run at 31. And it's going to be able to go up. Because once I add this, that's four more bucks. But that's pretty much its limit. Somewhere around 35 or so. Because I can upgrade that. Uh, no dots, nothing, nothing there for that. And we push on. And like I said, the SD is not going to be able to make that run another time. <laughs> so it, it'll have a decent run, but you know, it's got two chews, but, uh, we're going to probably see the purple increase. I would get, well, no, maybe not, because I think black goes, yeah, black goes before them. So black puts the dot down. Neither one gets to use it ever again. Um, oh, no. Yeah, but KK gets to keep using it, but KK doesn't care. And black doesn't care. I mean, they both want it, but they're not the massive runs. They're running just a G train. So the companies with two trains are not going to have the most massive runs in the game, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, we don't want them to be that good. Debating whether or not I want this dot with the CL. Um, I set up their run. Basically, they have a 19 run, I think, here. If they figured things out right, and that, that could actually be improved uh, without playing this track. Uh, four... Let's see. Where, where did that 19 run come from? Oh no, going down here. 4, 5, 10, 11, 19. Running a 3G. Can't really do much to help that ever, <laughs> you know, except maybe if I can link into all this. Putting this piece down got me to 20. 4, 5, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 19. I can't even cut down here and add an extra buck to it because I'm out of the green pieces that would get me in there. Um, again, really, really limited track in this game for the amount of spaces that end up tracked. 
Uh, shit. And that dot, who does it hurt? Well, that's what's hard to remember. Um, it definitely hurts. Well, I think it hurts the Sudban, which I do not want hurt. But I'm not sure, <laughs> because the Sudban has this, and I can't remember what I was hitting. Um, no, I don't... Well, wait, yeah, because it comes down here, and it ran down this way. It's this piece that I added. It ran down this way, and then around. So, you know, I don't think I want that dot, and I don't think I even want to lay that track. And like I said, I'm, I'm hitting 20. I'm get, dropping down to a 20. The option beyond that is running down to a 19, which just is hard to justify. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, I have the suit bun. I have that. And the other companies that might be getting hit, well, Here's the problem. The KK has dots. The KK is in there. No one, uh, the only other person with a dot is purple. They have the money for it. And they will play the fucking dot if I don't. Uh, and they will use the track. <sighs> so I almost have to do it. Slip my own wrist. Unless I could come to some sort of um, agreement. I'm not sure that agreement is really in his favor. He's kind of like, well, you know, we're not the only ones using it. Screw it. Go ahead, cut it off with your stupid CL that can barely use it. Um, and there's so much wrong. So, like, I have to lay this track to do it. I can upgrade to this, and that'll get me an extra 10 bucks. That'll get me up to 21. Um, and potentially this could break into here, which would get it to a 22. Uh, and maybe further by hitting Vienna. So it's not that terrible a play, so I'll reverse it and end up doing it anyway. Just because this guy um, is too much of a threat. He's sitting there with 100 bucks and a dot. And honestly, he has the only other dot that could be played there. But I think he would do it. <laughs> Table talk collusion type stuff is the one thing that really kind of um, takes the biggest hit when I play solo. Uh, and it's weird that it does because this is maybe one of those situations where neither player wants the dot there. Um, but I just take away the element of trust in the game in so many ways. So. When companies start, nobody's willing to float it and cut some sort of deal. Yeah, I promise I won't rape it completely and hand it off to you in the first three turns of the game. You know, I'll run it good, and maybe you end up with it, maybe I end up with it, but I'm not going to just dump it on you until you have, you know, an opportunity. Um, or uh, because you could wipe somebody out in most of these games with some cost to yourself, but you could just knock a player out by overrunning a company or something like that um too early uh, of course that may be the goal you know you're both looking at it with wow i can make a ton of money and some one of us is going to end up with it and have to cope with it but the other one will get a lot of percentage um but in this kind of case again is somebody going to dot it out every now and then a deal like that breaks out but in this case I just don't feel comfortable enough making that kind of deal. On the other hand, when I play games with people, <laughs> very often uh, deals like that happen, especially if there's not a lot of people. Um, if there's a couple of players, like if it's a three-player game and two players both benefit widely from something and either one can slash it, uh, but they both hurt by it. And that's really the situation that happened here. Both players are hurt by him slashing. Both players are not hurt by him slashing it. Uh, so, I, I, I just, whatever. Oh, God. And I have no idea if I start, I, I, I 
think I did not. Yeah, I, I already started this video. Yeah. So I've already apologized for the four hour monstrosity, I hope, that I put up beforehand. Although I started videoing this probably before that. Yeah, it turned out that the, uh, because I have no insight into how long, um, how much memory card I have available, how much, mem how much time I've used up on the memory card, which all the other Vireos that I've used have, uh, but this one has like some spare memory that I can't actually access from the camera. <laughs> like built-in memory, so I don't need a memory card, but it won't run without a memory card. Um, it doesn't give me any information except how long the current little snippet is, which you know, means that I'm shooting in the dark and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna end up seeing more of these, I fear, because I don't wanna do them. Um, the reason is they take forever for me to load up and everything. Any, I, I think they're less of a harm for you because uh, you can always pause <laughs> and at a good point and come back to them. Uh, but for me, once I once I put it together, you know, I've I've expended a lot of uh, a lot of computer time, essentially forming the video, and then it takes like eight hours to load up and process on YouTube, and nobody's happy about it. But. Thanks, camera. <laughs> I cannot tell how long a video is until I load it to YouTube. So because normally, you know, you'd think, well, why don't you just go to the end of the video and see how many minutes it has. The metadata, the way that I uh, uh, glue my videos together is wrong. It tells how long the first clip is. <laughs> and then YouTube is able to figure out what's wrong with the metadata and fix that and tell you how long, you know, that it's a four hour video. But I look at it and I'm like, it could be any length of time when I look at it on my computer. When I look at it on here, I got no idea. Cause again, it's not telling me how much time I have left at the current level for my, gra for my uh, memory card, which is what these, com these uh, cameras always used to do. And of course, uh, babbling so much, uh, I'm gonna lose my train of thought about the game and hardly wanna play. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, watched a movie last night. Well, not a movie, a, a mini series, basically. And now I kind of want to go for a walk or something, but I got to get this sucker out. Hey, uh, it's Christmas Eve. Woo! Since I don't want to, didn't want to cut such a deal. They had some stasis on the blue and yellow line. They basically made what they make. Um, so this guy doesn't actually need that. So it was a great place for him to die. <laughs> for him to force the dot because um, his run is this thing let me see his current run is this for his coal mine and he's looking to extend it here I haven't figured out what it comes down to but that's what he's counting on not some extension out into here that would honestly cost me, I think, um, maybe not, maybe not, but it, it, the, the, it wouldn't add as much as it's adding to other people. Um, whereas I can actually get some of the same benefits maybe by linking in here because instead of making this my terminus, um, well, actually this, uh, if, if, yeah, um, I can maybe zoom up into there. So you know, it's not it's not that horrible for me. And I have other opportunities too, like cutting through here and getting another ten that way or something. But that's a lot of effort compared to you know for for the payoff compared to getting forty uh, up here if I'm allowed to break in there. And I don't. I think that there's an easy way to stop me. <laughs> you know, somebody could eat both of those up. Uh, but, yeah. God damn it, my most hated track of all. <laughs> this, if this upgrades, it runs me into, oh, I can go this way or this way, but not that way. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, the... Hungarian position in place, but the Sudoban was looking and saying, Oh, I want that too. I want that too. 
<laughs> it doesn't do it for them. Now, the question is whether opening this up would do it for them. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, trying, trying, this is where, shit, you know, <laughs> when, when you have too many trains in a game, no matter what, it starts getting ugly. And when you have too many paths, and it's the too many paths thing that's usually the problem with the non-curved track. But here, this game, with all the density of track and the double types of routes, starts creating way too much of a headache. Um, it was really charming the first time in terms of like, well, not charming. It was, it was astounding what you can do in this game. But the headache of the track configuration and the train routes is beginning to make me less and less of uh, a big fan of this. The Sudaban route work, I'm not quite sure what I had last time, but it basically involves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right now. Okay. Um, could I improve that directly? I don't know. But a much more appealing possibility is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And that works because my 5G is running. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, boink, uh, I think. Let me, let me look again. 5G. One, two, three, four, five, boink. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Yeah, um, and if I could get around this, somehow, <laughs> I could make that better. But getting around that's not trivial. Uh, that looks really tough to do. I had been, I think, skipping this and just counting down here, and I'm like, oh, I can hit there, yay, you know. <laughs> it's not quite that good. But, uh, I should be able to hit this unless I was counting that track in there, and maybe I was, because my money looks too big. Uh, so we'll have to recount my line without this opening. There's another possible super route coming down, not that, uh, another possible super extension coming down here uh, to this, because then I'd be starting here instead. Uh, that would add another city though, and that fucks me over, because then I don't hit Vienna. So, uh, and I can't avoid this loop, that's too valuable. So I don't see anything that's really gonna help too much. The differences aren't that big. I was up around 71 or so, now I'm down to 66. And again, if I remember what the hell I'm doing, which is instead of cutting down here, let me think, what was the trick? What was the trick? Fuck, fuck, fuck. For some reason this made sense. Uh, oh yes. Instead of cutting down here, I have actually three spaces I can do from here. One would be up here, here, and here. And that's important um, because I'm actually not using this track in my G train. So. It does actually work, and that, that's my goal, and I don't think it can be stopped easily. Basically, it's a wide curve and a straight will get me in there, um, and there are plenty of both of those. People could lay lots of track and try to, you know, foil it directly, uh, but that's generally not something... The, the way I look at that is um, other players aren't focusing that much on your track lays and what you're trying to do. But when they see something open up or when they see something like this trying to happen, they're like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Does that do me good? <laughs> Trouble with the SB and building track coming down this way, but uh, which is, you know, probably a hopeless cause, <laughs> whatever. Um, <clears throat> but it's running through its Budapest up and over. 
and I'm coming out 10 bucks less than I did last time. I was at 29, uh, now I'm coming out at 28. And I'm not quite sure why. By the way, I have this turned over here because I don't think I have to calculate this again unless something massive changes that I'm not seeing. I don't see any growth for them. And similarly for yellow, I don't see any growth for them. So that'll save me a little effort. The companies with two trains, that's never the case. They, inf they, uh, they end up touching so much that it's just not going to happen. <laughs> um, I don't think. It may at some point in the game, but so far, in my last game, it really didn't happen with the two, two train companies. Uh, they could almost always find something good to improve their route uh, by a little bit at a time each time. Um, but in this case, yeah, I'm just not seeing where I was hitting an extra 10 bucks. I tried running down this way, and that actually got me 10 bucks less. Uh, so I do not know. Yeah. Yeah, I got no idea. Um, so I'll just run it less and figure, you know, maybe it was correct last time. I doubt it. I don't see how. <laughs> I, I couldn't have added this by cutting through here. Uh, what if this dot was there? Well, I would have hit something bigger. Yeah, so I, I just, I do not see anything that could have changed that would have given me 10 bucks more, but maybe I'm missing something. And then we finish things up with the B&H making what I think is probably its final well, value is at 36 a share, just zipping down here, um, we made that connection. However, it's possible that instead of hitting here, maybe I could make it to Budapest uh, or Vienna. How could that happen? That would be if there's a cut through here uh, that's available. So I ought to be thinking about that, uh, whether I can lay a track uh, that'll get me there. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Uh, basically, it has to be this. I can't do some, man, there isn't one that does this, but I, I can't try to get it out of here or something. I need to hit this and one of those two to get a, any benefit out of it. And I think that's unlikely. Um, but there are other ways of doing it. It might not be the cut through here to here. It might be, um, I'm not gonna be able to find my way back here. There's nothing that branches three ways. So I don't have to worry about maybe upgrading this into something that loops me back to either one. And there's something that does one of those at least. Uh, but there is the possibility that I could get here and then this bridge is up if the right pieces are available. And there's only one of each of these pieces. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, a, it, it's this puzzle and there may be two options, one of which takes two track legs, one of which takes one. And I have to make the choice, you know, on the first, on the way I'm entering or whatever, and that makes life also difficult. But in order to do it, I have to branch from here and work my way up. That's a lot of effort. I may make one run that way. Remember, this is the end of the second operating round in the penultimate series of operating rounds because there's not enough money uh, to go another. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna break the bank this time, but I'm gonna break the bank next time. It's pretty much guaranteed. I'm sure you're already sick of it. If you are, you're probably not watching anymore <laughs> with the very detailed level that I've been going into that co help cause these four hour, the four hour video. Um, we're at a point where very little seems to be happening. It's not really the case. A number of the companies are making one buck changes or laying track that looks like a, maybe it'll get me something or not. But we're actually seeing um, not so much there, but over here, uh, this now has been connected. Certain breakthroughs that might mean four or five buck per share differences. Which, again, it's, it's not going to be groundbreaking. The big deal is what trains you have and whether you have a, an at all decent route. But like the KK, it just added one buck per share by breaking through to here. But, so,
oh, maybe actually I screwed up. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 60, 10, 20, uh, 90. So actually I should be three bucks a share higher than that. <laughs> so, so yeah, the breakthrough, the big deal is that I get to go up here, but you see now I could add this one next time, uh, assuming the track's there, which it may well not be. <laughs> um, but alternatives are trying to break through up here and get in there. There's only one remaining one of these though. And that's not going to get me out of, that's not going to get either of these. So this is the best we can do. Uh, so yeah, um, I got to give out some extra cash though to the end of the stock of the operating round to the next stock round i think things crash next turn i'll pay out because it's going to probably be fairly close if they do i've got a few thousand bucks here um that i can throw into the bank if it's clear that it's crashing uh we could actually calculate it out you know we got six thousand nine say ten thousand right there <laughs> Uh, 16, no, that can't be right. Um, yeah, that's 600, a thousand, I'm sorry, uh, 1600, 1900, 22, 25, uh, about 3000 bucks is going to pay out next turn maybe a little less I remember there are a couple in here that don't um and we've got five six seven eight nine ten i think this is four thousand what did i what did i say i don't remember what i said six hundred a thousand yeah so so it's like somewhere between 23 and 2,500 uh, around. So let's say it's 2,500 around. We're talking about about 7,000. There's about, there's 4,000 right here. Um, there's probably about another thousand. It looks like it's gonna break, you know, <laughs> unless something really wacky happens. I'll still pay out with coins instead of spreadsheeting it just because I should have enough money to cover it if I don't, well, I'll use some other markers um, to represent larger quantities. At this point, as in any XX game, it's time to kind of rebalance your portfolio. Maybe you didn't have cash before, and now you do. And there's better things you can buy than what you have available. Or you can fill out your portfolio, actually. Two, four, five, six, seven. He's got room for four more shares. Um, there might be stuff that's of interest. The CL, yeah, geez. I mean, it's the worst price-wise, but it has some opportunity to grow. Uh, others that do as well, the MS actually does. I know I've got it flipped over to say it doesn't, but that's not correct. The KK probably does. And there's kind of the question of, well, what do you want to get rid of? What do you want to gain? Nobody's holding CLs. Who doesn't who isn't running it this guy could dump a share though because he's on a plateau and it won't hurt him it's not going to sell out i don't think um the kks how do they evaluate well they are almost they're, they're about the same so the bohemian it is fixed it's not going anywhere and i think the bh is not going anywhere um, the KKs make a little more money than the Bohemian, but the Bohemian uh, is making 20 bucks a share as compared to 15, and then it goes up to 20. But and it's also able to move up from being sold out, so it would take a fairly it, it would take a fair advantage for the KK to be worth going forward, unlike the SD, which makes so much more money that it doesn't matter that it's back there and not making uh, great advances. It's just pulling in so much cash, nobody's going to get rid of it. Uh, the yellows, on the other hand, I mean, they have a potential for a big breakout, but I feel like if they get a big breakout, other companies will as well. 
we take a look at the difference between the green and the yellow, the yellow is probably better than the green just because of its stock position um, and its capacity for breakout. Green has a capacity for breakout too, but it looks difficult. So green wasn't able to increase its value, I don't think, but it's getting very close to being able to. Right now we're running this and see all these doinkers just hurt the green company that's the problem i have to work a way out that's not you know hitting all these doinkers but i can hit some of them so for example here one two three four five six seven i got three more spaces you know yeah of course this is only worth 30 no more than these are so so yeah, it's, it's hard to tell what kind of advantages things have. The real breakouts come on those G trains because they can hit a line of track that, you know, isn't adding any spaces to the, the train, but it adds valuation. There's big clumps of these dots sitting around uh, that are still capable of being picked up. For the numeric trains, it's a lot harder, except when you're looking at something like the green one that's running a one, two, three, four, five, six of its 10 train, you know? Or if somebody could somehow break through to a major place like Vienna, where they could basically get an extra 40 bucks or so uh, on a run. But it, it's still gonna be playing around the edges in terms of the gains that you can get. And it's probably better just to look at the current prices and the stock valuations and make decisions on that rather than not look too much for uh, birds in the bush or whatever. A fair amount of money went back in the bank actually. You can see there's a 500 in there, but I don't know how much that actually changed things itself. Um, he had to fill out his portfolio. There wasn't much left. He managed to get a KK, which is pretty good. He also bought some CLs, which for stock value, they're not bad. Uh, in terms of the growth on them. Uh, he actually dumped a CL instead of an SB, which he's kind of regretting, but he thought he'd get two purchases and he only got one um, of the KK. Nothing else was dropped and loosened, so eh, that was probably a mistake. It's hard to tell. So here I'm gaining 20 bucks and then 30, so a total of 70 bucks. Here I'll be gaining 15, 30, 40, 50 bucks. So there's a 20 buck difference. Over three rounds, there's a seven buck difference. It's right about 20. So it was, it was pretty much even on the two and either one could increase so I, I don't know which one's more likely probably the CL's more likely um, other people you can see that movement to the KK dropping the SB uh, rails he didn't have to drop anything because he did not have a full portfolio and, uh, and just you know grabbing what was more likely to make money and now we just move forward into the next round. Um, part of the problem is, in, in terms of playing at this point, and, and I think you saw that with some of the disturbances I have, I can't just go with these values. They're not guaranteed here. Even this late in the game, there's still capacity for tweaking, and it's not just the little things along the edges like, oh, I upgraded a city, I'm worth, you know, 10 bucks more or not. It could be major reroute uh, decisions, and that makes for a big headache and a much, much slower end game. And the end game is really kind of uninteresting. I mean, yes, there's some value to the races for, you know, the track and the competition for which tiles are left and which aren't, stuff like that which might be appealing to some people, but it's not to me. I really don't find that part of the game terribly enjoyable. Um, but I also feel like the aspects 
that are involved in it, including the limited tile supply, are really, really important to this game. If you had kind of unlimited tiles like you do in 1817, um, you could pretty much break through anywhere. You might as well, you know, get rid of the curves and all that kind of stuff too and make it, uh, make it the, um, the angular track connections that like allow you to pivot and everything. Um, there's an argument for realism on that, of course, but uh, in terms of uh, in terms of creating this kind of limited competition for uh, the good track pieces and all that, it spoils a piece of the game, a piece of the game that I think is vital for this particular design, but one which is a headache. <laughs> And it's the headache factor that makes this one hard to cope with. And, you know, honestly, how much effort is it worth uh, to try to eke out that extra little bit? Well, my last game was pretty close, uh, so that kind of effort could have easily made a mistake. It could have easily made a difference. All right, I'll be back Christmas morning now, sometime during, during tomorrow, which is, it, it may already be Christmas morning. Um, to take care of this. I, w I went out for a walk today. Uh, my intention was to see some llamas that we have nearby. And uh, they were kind of too far away to get a good view of. So it might have been a goat too, but whatever. <laughs> you know, uh, It's not like I'll ever get through the entire stack of games in my lifetime, I don't think the incremental improvements and actually the MS made a big jump up to 30 this turn I don't know quite how um I mean it's legitimate I just it's got to do with this link uh, being built here that that created a lot of goodness for them that I thought was going to happen uh I don't know if they can improve that um the I'm working on the KK right now others have been largely static uh, but for the KK I ran into a particular problem which is with this piece of track the brown track that I want actually exists uh, it's this one now there's another opportunity that would also work which is this one I cannot find anything that gets me towards either of them. <laughs> well, now wait, maybe, maybe one of these placed the other way. I'll work. Um, because I am allowed to lay the track here, even if I can't reach uh, portions of the track. Um, yeah, this would be a particularly ugly situation of um, limited tracks. If there's multiple ways of getting the green track to the brown track and none of them are available right now yes they can be upgraded but i'm running out of brown tracks that'll upgrade you know, <laughs> the, the green tracks that i need so that's uh it, it, and it probably won't get used for what i want if i make it free uh, so that's kind of a, a painful situation with the track scarcity in this game it's not available the problem is the pieces that might work are these curved pieces here? Well, it's not the right curve that it's coming off of. I need to upgrade this curve. And so I can't use them. They connect to the wrong thing. Um, and then this one, if this connected, same thing. It's connecting to the curve already. Uh, what I'm lacking and doesn't exist in this game, which would help, is the curve with the little curve on the other end. And I find that kind of strange that these pieces exist, but that piece doesn't, because they're kind of the same same spirit of, what the hell, you know, <laughs> that looks crazy uh, to people who are used to the 1830 set. Um, so would move that curve to this little corner. That's, that's what I'm looking for. It's not in this set. I don't remember the number of them. There were ones that were added because, hey, these kind of are needed uh, to be able to move, especially with a limited uh, 
a, a limited set of tracks to be able to move to the brown tiles that you need. And for whatever reason, that one was left out. Um, well, there's actually a pair of them, I think, aren't there? I think there's a difference between this and that. <laughs> uh, so there's a couple of pieces of track that I would need the ability to upgrade um, to the brown. And I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to find, you know. I mean, if I find uh, a Horns of Happiness like this one and turn it into the Triangle of Love, especially where it's not going to give anyone else any big benefit. I would love to give it where it would give Red a benefit, but that's not available. Um, that would enable me to eventually build this, which is what I need. So we'll do that. Even though this actually added money, brought him up to 30 uh, share um, running his old route, has actually managed to extend this down far enough. It's not connected yet, and that's going to make a jump because I'm hitting some doinkers that I don't need to, although. <laughs> Some of them I do need to, uh, like this one and this one. Um, but, yeah, I'm hitting at least one doinker that I don't need to. So I can upgrade by, like, 20 bucks because I'm going this way instead of that way. Um, and I'm already up to 31. So I should be able to get to about 33 plus any increases from T's. That's probably, you know... A fair amount of money. So this is going to get up into the range that the BH is in, running in richer territory with a slightly smaller train. Um, although the BH is going to be able to, no, it's not going to be able to increase. It's this SD that's going to be able to increase by running this uh, up there. And they add a few bucks doing that uh, once they hook that up. And they're the ones who wanted this, and I kind of got lost on that <laughs> at some point. Uh, that leaves us with just one company, and I don't know. I don't think they have much they can do. All right, first operating down, you can see taking almost half the blues out of the pile already. And yeah, there's you know another four hundred dollars or so in the other stuff as well so that has to be kept in mind it's not gonna it's not an absolute slam dunk that you know this is over uh, on this round but it looks pretty likely to me uh, it's hard it's hard to tell I mean I could calculate it out and see for sure but I don't think it really impacts anybody's decision nobody's thinking about a train if it's gonna run longer uh, we are seeing those incremental increases uh, the poor CL I don't know why are they are they really unable to increase yeah I'm not sure basically they have two options one two three and then where <laughs> uh, one two and then down for three and this is kind of like two cities so it's not really all that worthwhile and then the other option may be coming up this way or this way uh, and then trying to close out in here. Now, once this is hooked up, things may become interesting and maybe I get a little boost there, but they're, they're the ones who are failing in terms of uh, um, producing a lot of cash. Some people, you know, he had to buy it and he dumped a share and held his 50%. So basically there was the decision of, yeah, this isn't actually going anywhere, and it's going to be stuck in the doldrums. It does make good stock value, but not, you know, it's not significantly better, is it? Uh, it's making 20 a share still. Here it goes up to 30, but, you know, I mean... <laughs> It's basically very incremental. There's like going to be one stock round, one operating round where it makes more money than the blues and yellows do. And the other companies are making pretty decent, um, are making better runs to enough value that it makes up for it easily. Uh, in fact, even these are probably preferable uh, to those blacks. 
for whatever value that is. All right. Biggest of the incremental gains, the seal trying to inch out another buck or two, but uh, is the Sudabon actually. This hookup was huge. Um, it gets it another six bucks, so it's up to like 72, which I don't know if I ranged higher than that. I know last game I was hitting some very high numbers, but they decreased as we got later in the game. <laughs> Uh, it was basically in that period where you could have three trains. Things were hooked up much, much better than they are in this game. Uh, I'm learning a little bit more about uh, certain types of defenses, although nobody made an attempt to just bust this up. I don't think anybody quite realized how potent that could be. Um, everybody's kind of riding it, and he's doing well. It would have been a good move to cut it had somebody seen. It's one of the problems with playing solo is making that determination. Hey, does the next person, you know, or the next people, do they really see what's going on? Well, part of that is the next person couldn't touch it. Uh, the BB could, and, and they didn't, <laughs> you know, for whatever reason. Um, and largely because of the... Hey, that's not really fucking with me. It's not clear that that's going to be big for a lot of people. I don't see what he's doing. What's going on? It's probably just going to be a couple bucks. Screw it. Uh, but the BB doesn't need to lay track, so it could have been messing with that and probably could have prevented it. And that's a big difference. You know, this is one of the one of the people with a leading piles of cash. We got three five hundreds and a big pile of blues. That's about equal to what he's holding. About equal to what he's holding. Um, these people should have been tinkering along the edges with that. <coughs> uh, so, we ran out of $100 chips, and it's time to take a look. I got about 450 here in the greens, I think, uh, somewhere in that range. Call it maybe another 200 in here, right? Uh, $5, well, 5 times 40 is 200 right there. Uh, so call it maybe 300 more. Um, we're looking at 750. We're not done with this run yet. There's still three companies to go. Granted, they're not the huge ones, but eh, I don't think any of them are. Well, the red, the red's kind of big. Um, and <laughs> there's not enough money, or there's barely enough money to cover another run of the Sudabon. So I'm gonna call that, uh, we're gonna break the bank. And the reason for this is simply so that I can flush the new cash in so that I don't have to hand out big stacks of, you know, greens and reds <laughs> to make it absolutely clear it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, we have another full operating round to go, and there's barely, uh, there's barely enough money to run this operating round. So as a shortcut, I'm just going to do that at this moment. With that influx, about $4,000, uh, it's looking likely that I may have to go get um, either another uh, uh, another uh, uh, container of chips, or maybe just deduct a thousand bucks from everybody's run, uh, from everybody's pocket, and try to remember that I've done that. All right. <laughs> the green SB makes its way it still has some room for improvement but it made the major hookup here which means I can run into here Bucharest instead of down to whatever this little town is I still have to hit some doinks but the big 10 train lets me do that and I'm up to 38 uh, there's only one more operating round so it's probably only gonna go up one more buck uh, right the T's only Increase ten; they only increase by one when you when you upgrade them. So you know it's not like I'm going to get a huge difference here, but I am going to get an extra buck by upgrading. Oh, so you know that company is becoming more justified. <laughs> hey, and we got almost all the loops built. The only thing we probably want this is. Oh, this was very desirable in my last game was a blast through here. Nobody cares about it now uh, Not quite sure why 
I guess because the SD and the BH had big trains, but they did last time too. And for some reason, they re other people really wanted to get in through here. How would Blue feel about it? Well, that's a good question. Blue might see the problem is there's not much beyond here. So what right Blue's running right now is one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, that's not going to get a whole lot better. It could. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could skip this town and make it through that. Uh, the tracks aren't there, the time's not there, um, and I don't think they ever really were. So it's not too bad a thing that they've just decided to say screw it. And in my last game, we had other people oozing down through here like maybe yellow or something like that was coming in through here whereas the orange red were focused more in that direction well the red at least was orange the sd is it's stuck with these three uh if all three corporations start i'm not i don't think all of them started i think this one did not even start so that's a dot that's missing that they would have had available to them which is kind of a neat thing to tell you the truth uh but you know if players put if players go for the miners which i think you want to optimize the amount of miners that you can get as compared to those little mountain railways the mountain railways can make you a little bit better money but early on but early money is less important in this than you'd think and i, I kind of think they're not absolute garbage, but I mean, it's better than not investing your money. It may be as good as something like this, but the additional control that you have about having a rail, uh, uh, an additional miner that maybe you can shift trains around with and everything, that's just too much to give up um, for a choice of a share. You, know, you have a more flexible share choice with those mountain railways. All right. One more left for this operating round. Okay, and that finishes up uh, the third operating round. Not a lot of excitement happening. I think we had a we had a one buck gain on the green. Everything else I just kind of trusted without trying to look for something else. Uh, there just isn't room for a lot of movement. We're not gonna get up here and do anything there. So I just left things as they were. Uh, there might be companies that lost a buck or something that could have been upgraded, but I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> more likely to have made other kind of calculation errors. And it's pretty damn clear that $4,000 in flux uh, is nowhere near, uh, there's nowhere near as much money sitting in here. Um, I, there's maybe a couple hundred bucks, so. <laughs> Nice thing is we didn't run out completely, which is always a good thing. So all that's left now is to spreadsheet uh, the end results. And I'm hoping this video is a lot shorter than that four hour one. No, I'm almost certain it is. I've done a couple of uh, sets of operating rounds, but almost nothing's been happening. The meat of the game is in that big four hour video, unfortunately. But I don't know. <laughs> eh, whatever you want to say. Anyway, uh, I'll start doing that at this point. I'm seeing at least one thing uh, where a fairly significant issue was not taken advantage of. Either purple or tan could have cut green uh, with a dot there. I don't think that's a big deal in terms of him. And although this guy's in the lead, he's only got one share of it. Nobody, nobody invested in it. So it's okay that they didn't. Uh, similarly, let's see, could purple have gotten down here? Not easily. Uh, th this is the one dot that could have done some harm, I think. Nobody else was using anything and nobody was paying too much attention. Although he did get a really nice run considering uh, off of that. And so if it ends up being like, you know, under 50 bucks in his favor, then we got an issue. Uh, but yeah. Spreadsheeting out the initial values, let's see. Um, 
I'm going to hide these, but now you can see them anyway. Uh, in terms of cash sitting on hand, uh, we had some similarities there, which is kind of interesting. So the number one player uh, had the most cash, I think, at 3780. My writing's kind of hard to read. Number six at 3325. 3090 for number two. We saw those big piles, right? Uh, but the next layer down was about a, a, a thousand behind the lead. And then this guy, now remember, he had to buy a significant portion of that 10 train, and that prevented him from um, having stock value as well uh, <laughs> at, at, at the beginning, you know. And for, for the last couple of rounds. So he only caught up and filled his portfolio in the last round. So we know he's hammered. Uh, but let's keep looking at some of the others. What I did with the, the valuations here is I wrote next to that um, sort of their biggest company and then their next company uh, if they owned company. Well, there are two companies that they might have owned and then the value of what they had in residual shares. So we can see about 1500 uh, for number one in the two companies he owned. He didn't have a lot of the K&K &K and the Bosnian uh, wasn't, it was the least valuable company on the board. And then he only had 660 in remaining shares because he has so many shares outstanding, you know, in his own companies that he only had three other certificates that he's sitting on. Uh, we go down to the next one. Uh, a fair amount of cash in his one main company. This was the big company, right? And he had, uh, the, it was one of the biggest payouts for, for a long time, honestly. Um, and then 1460 in other shares. Just to show you, he had more in other shares than anything you can kind of combine on player one. So that's kind of a nice situation. Uh, however, the extra cash that player one had accumulated ends up putting him in the lead over player two there. Uh, player three we barely want to talk about. <laughs> I mean, you know, his cash is limited by the fact that he had to buy shares. The shares that he had are not the most attractive because he had to sell things off and whatever. And he had a couple of the good ones, but whatever. Uh, player four over here. Player four had... Uh, 2700 in cash. His one company was quite worthwhile, uh, the most valuable holding of anybody who held a, a single company. Now, CL could have been in that case. He sold off a share, but those MLs um, ended up being the largest single holding, 60% of a 240 uh, item. And then his remainder was in that 1200 range, which isn't huge. Um, and he ended up in, oh, I don't know, third place, fourth place, something like that. Uh, fourth place, but it, it's a kind of a distant location. Player five over here uh, with the uh, Bohemian uh, also had about tw uh, 2,700 in cash, a little less value in his prime company, but you know, he had a couple of shares of this. Uh, so he actually ended up with a little bit more in investment portfolio. And worked out though that he ends up getting just a little bit less uh, than the fourth player. And then for the sixth player, second most cash on hand, his company valuation, well, his big Sudaban is not all that worthwhile. And I only have 50% of it, which puts me in the range of what he's holding with the greens, honestly, with 60%. Um, but I had a second company that's worth a shitload. <laughs> uh, worth the third most out of any single company holding. Oh, actually, no, no, no. Worth the second most out of any single company holding and worth the, you know, almost as much as anybody's stock valuation 
segment. Uh, but then because again, two companies only had 580 left over, but ended up with the, the top range here at 6205. About a $300 um, dollar difference between player one and player six. And another couple hundred going down to player two. And then it, it, it swings down um, the last couple. These two players with one company, nothing spectacular, one train on it each, wasn't making the huge cash. Those guys ended up in kind of what you expect to be, I guess, the middling ground in the game. With this guy, just he crashed. Um, other people crashed, though. Player two had a had a unwelcome situation, if I recall correctly, or maybe it was player one. Um, someone had a uh, player one ended up losing a train. Essentially, they had too much extra money for a train. Uh, I, I think, and then I don't know. Um, one of the things to learn from this, though, is. Getting a second train, especially if they're two different types of trains, is incredibly valuable. You can see out of the two players, uh, let's see, let's take a look at the leads here. Uh, player six certainly had two real trains on a good company, and then something that he ran for stock value, which, you know, never was making that much money. And you, you, if you're just running for stock, <laughs> you, you're not going to win the game, you know. Uh, it's the fact that he was able to get something that could make good runs as well uh, to purchase better better shares. Um, and let me see where else we can go. Player one came in second. Kind of an interesting situation there. Neither of his rails were really kick-ass. Um, the BH had a decent sized train on it running. He used the funding from one to fund the other and, you know, held on to the best shares in the game for his investments. But other than that, it's kind of hard to say that he did a very good game. I would actually say this guy was in a better position with the purple, the way it, it, it flowed into, uh, into play. It didn't get him you know, it, it threw him back a couple hundred bucks comparatively, and I'm not quite sure what he did that screwed up. He must have taken some kind of hit um, for that, because that that just looks like a sweet company. It was producing good money. Granted, he only had 50%, but still, you know, his other shares, he was holding on to some of the good stuff for, for a long time. Um, what about the transitions? How were they managed? Well, what I found was <laughs> transitioning those coal companies is tough. Uh, the other, the proto state railways, you're not really in much control over them. Yeah, you might be able to push things with the trains or whatever, but the table as a whole kind of agrees when they come out. Um, but uh, for the coal railways, you have a lot of control over that. And let me try to think what we had here. Um, nope. You know, this guy did pretty fucking well, considering that the only company he was running for a large part of the game. I mean, he had his two miners, but the other company he was running was what I thought was a really, really shitty company. Now, it ended up with a hell of a run, but, you know. That may be just possible for it, because it, if it starts early enough, it can get some important dots. These are not the dots I would have considered that important, but all the same, uh, wouldn't have mattered if it didn't end up with such a big train, though, right? I mean, that's what spewed it over was the funding from this railway which he had less of a percentage of and was able to move it in. And honestly, that company didn't have the capability to lay the dots, but it did have the capability to run that 5G train for something reasonable. Um, oh, I was surprised I was able to make anything of value out of that 10 train. He was so cut off. That's one of the coal companies there. You know, I thought I was doing everything right. Didn't manage to get the G train again. I don't feel like that's something you have ultimate control over. That, that's part of where this game is, is kind of weird for me, is um, 
certainly, you know, it's decisions by the players that, that determine when the trains are going to come out and what, what you're going to be able to buy and whatever. But I think he would have had a hard time engineering getting the right kind of train for the track he was building. Um, and I'm, I'm not really sure what better he could do. There just aren't that many G trains. And if everybody decides they're valuable. The first time I played, I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't, but, you know, <laughs> I really didn't know what I was doing, and, you know, yeah, the G-Train routes looked good, they certainly did as they got longer, but it wasn't absolutely clear that, you know, that they were as valuable, and then after I played that, I realized just how valuable they were, and they didn't end up as valuable here, but he really needed one. <laughs> he really did not need that 10 train that had to be bought out of pocket. Um, over here, similar situation to the first time I played with uh, a company getting stuck with not a G train. Now, he's not too unhappy this time. He was able uh, to either predict or be set up for it and have something that wasn't terrible. You can see he got the same kind of run the MS did. And honestly, given that his first dot was basically a waste, his starting location dot, you could say that's his own fault. But these are, again, coal companies. You know? uh, very, very difficult to manage, I, I have to say. You want, what, you want the fruits of them, but you may not want the coal company itself. But we go over here and, okay. His call company, again, didn't pan out. Now, this is what's really different. I had really sweet um, money coming up. Again, the call companies did a better job in the first game that I played. Uh, I had really sweet money coming off of the call companies that had G-trains that were aligned right. But these two were not aligned right in that game. Uh, the fact that they wanted to move in directions that were different from where their starting location was meant that it took them a few turns to catch up and they just weren't making the right revenues and just bad things happened to those players because it took them too long to get their trains hooked up. Well, this time I worked a little harder and got things hooked up a little better, but they still didn't really click all that well and neither did these. Who did? The people who could take advantage of those routes. The Sudabon, eh, I guess. It got to take advantage of all this looping going on up here with the with the G train. And and the point is, you don't like in 1830, you don't really have room or, or many of the 18XXs. You don't really have room to run a couple of the same type of train. Like, you know, if you could run um uh, an eight and a six or something like that, you'd have a lot of trouble finding those routes. And especially since, you know, the way the track gets laid out, you'd probably be hitting a bunch of doinkers. Um, but with the G trains, in conjunction with the regular train, you can basically find one of each route uh, because there's so many paths that are being built on the board through through the territory. And some of those paths are being built by the coal companies, which are like, hmm, my G trains are wonderful. And, you know, the other players are like, well, I want to get involved in that too. So they're helping with building those out as well, making sure that they hit their, their key cities. But they're also um, worried about building a separate set of routes for getting through the cities. One that, you know, doesn't use the same track. And so it's very, very easy to fall into a sweet position like this. Uh, and the purple also was in that kind of position where, you know, they were able to leverage the advantages of uh, the pre-state railways and use them to get a bigger advantage off the coal railway. Now, what about what it means for the beginning? See, here's, here's the thing. Those pre-state railways, I'm not that impressed with what they look like early in the game, which is why I keep being shocked um, to see that the coal railways aren't the ones running away with the game, you know? <laughs> but um, getting the right pre-state railways lined up was definitely helpful. So for example, this guy had a couple of the purples. Did he have a couple? 
I think the KK was a little spread out. I think he only had one share of it, but I'm not positive. It's hard for me to remember how this all started. One of the two companies was, yeah, yeah, yeah. he had both of them. So here, here's where the trick went, was the guy who got the Pseudobon um, isn't the guy who start, you know, he didn't start with all the Pseudobon companies or anything like that. Uh, but by controlling the, uh, the two-point company, uh, that gives him a lead, and unless somebody wants to invest in shares, you know, to take over it, you know, shares that aren't going to produce money, uh, it's a pretty iffy thing. Um, but why I like the coal companies, why, why they are so attractive to me, is I can pay out, and they're still pooling together enough cash early in the game that... I can build, exp you know, extra tra the expensive track or whatever. And then by the time they convert into these, uh, they have a fair amount of cash to drop their dots. The proto-state railways, you just want to run them. Now, I I'll give you this much. Both of these are getting some cash because they're split 50-50 into the treasuries. So, you know... Theoretically, the proto-state railways should be getting better runs, but they're not. The coal companies are getting pretty good runs because they're engineering them. Um, you know, that 1G or 2G can run through quite a few hexes and multiply its value to a higher, uh, to a higher ratio than what um, the, the pre-state railways can get. But... Here's the thing. The pre-state railways are slapping you, every single one of them, right into that Vienna-Budapest area, which is exactly what you need at the end of the game. And I think that's why they're really attractive. That initial, hmm, I get this, you know, this is the good stuff at the beginning of the game, <sighs> ignores the fact that, that the state railways are going to have a better shot of controlling the most important routes through the board and that those coal railways which turn into the regionals eventually just aren't going to be able um, to have the same assurance so if we look here we've got one yellow dot here one green dot here that he kind of chanced into basically and I gotta say the yellow dot was chancing into it too um, the one that got screwed is the Stotts Pond. And I think that it is likely to because it doesn't come out until the six trains come out and probably most of the dots have been laid by that point. And we can see it just did not get the kind of money that the other two state railways were able to pull in because it takes so long, you know, um, which might be a reason for whoever's owning that to really push the shit out of the trains. I was always looking at it as, eh, you know, I'm getting that 50-50 split, but there's always a balance there. All right, I'm going to um, stop here. I'll load it up later. I may have more words to say, but uh, before I come back for a review, but I hear my dinner starting to get itself prepared.